I made it super clear as uh, Gilmore Girls. So I'm from Connecticut. Gilmore Girls takes place in Connecticut. I lived in LA. Gilmore Girls was shot in LA. So I'm like, just watching, I'm like, you're not getting any of this shit right. <laughs> you know what one that always bothered me? It was the Twizzlers. Oh, yeah! It's the Twizzlers versus Red Vines. And if anyone's been from one coast to the other, traditionally, it's if you're from the West Coast or live on the West Coast, you're Red Vines. If you're on the East Coast, from the East Coast, you're Twizzlers. In, in Gilmore Girls, they said something about going to the movies and being like, oh, they don't even have the real Red Vines there. They only have Twizzlers. And it's like, even if, if that small chance that you lived on the East Coast and you were Team Red Vines, you would never say, like, the fake Red Vines. You would no. know that you were in the minority and you should hide you your, should hide your, your shame. disgusting <laughs> secret of Red Vines. Hi, Book Two. I'm Sarah. And I'm Rebecca. And today we're talking the best of the best. Actually, we're just talking best of 2017, but still pretty good. So we're talking today about the best books that we personally read this year. Yeah, our, our favorite books this year. They're our favorite of looking back at our at our read list. They didn't necessarily come out this year. No. I, I don't know if any of mine came out. That, maybe one. Mm -hmm. I never really read new books. Would you like to kick it off? What's your first one? Sure. Actually, the first one I picked is the first book that I read this year, and it's called Wolf by Wolf by... What by is it? Wolf, wolf by Wolf. Wolf by yeah, Wolf. wolf. I thought you said wolf by wolf. A wolf by wolf. <laughs> it's a tale about three dogs. <laughs> it's a story, like, it's an alternate kind of history in which the Axis powers won World War II. Oh. There's like a motorcycle race that happens with okay. Germany and Japan, and it kind of crosses. They win World War II with motorcycles? Yes. <laughs> This is like something they do like in celebration of okay. like being the winners. I don't know. So I think it's like, I don't know, five or ten Germans and five or ten Japanese people. I'm not sure. The year before, a girl won for the first time the motorcycle race. And the okay. protagonist, Yael, was in a concentration camp and she had experiments done on her to make her look more Aryan. Oh. And they ended up giving her the ability to shapeshift oh. and change her appearance. Interesting. So she shapeshifts into the girl who won the motorcycle race the year before in hopes that she'll win, because the winner gets to go to a ball, and Adolf Hitler is there, and her assignment is to kill Hitler. Okay. Yes. Interesting. It interesting. was very interesting, and yeah, I really liked it. So, the first one I picked was The Night Circus. Oh, yeah. Which I know we both read and we both talked about before. Lots of people on book two have read and talked about, so I won't talk too much about what it's about. What I will say is it was just a book that I enjoyed the most. And I think both you and I were really lukewarm on the ending. Yeah. It's definitely a book to me that was like super strong on world building and immersion and, and you know, decent in story. The next one I wrote down is also kind of popular, I think from last year, and it's This Savage Song by Victoria Schwab. She's very popular and I have yet to read any other Victoria Schwab. That was my first Victoria Schwab book, I think because I heard a little bit about it. There's demons. I don't want to get too much into the plot because okay. I feel like most people know it. But um, there were demons, and there's like a musical demon, and I'm like, I find that very fascinating. Like in Buffy. I guess, yeah. Like, no, no. Because <laughs> that was always fun when there's just a demon who makes everyone burst into song. No, no. He's more like he takes people's souls by playing music. My next one was one I read in October, I think, which mm -hmm. was a recommendation from Twitter called Signal to Noise. It was outside of the usual stuff that I was reading, so it just kind of caught me off guard, but it was a really lovely little kind of personal story. Basically like a woman with magical powers. She's from Mexico City. She's living, I think, in like San Francisco, and she travels back to Mexico City because her father dies. Mm. And it's like kind of her jumping back into her childhood world and facing a lot of things that she dealt with as a child. So it splits time periods between uh, her childhood and her uh, her return trip to Mexico City as an adult. So that was cool and I enjoyed it. My third one I picked, I also read pretty early on in the year, and it's Everything Leads to You by Nina Lepore. It's just the cutest little female-female romance ever. So at the time I picked it up, I had recently moved away from Los Angeles. Mm. I think it was like a month after I moved back here. And yeah. I was excited to be back, but I still was missing LA. Yeah. 
and I still do in a lot of ways. And that book takes place in Los Angeles, oh. and the author like clearly enjoys LA, or like you know, yeah, some, sometimes like they really get it right. So yeah, it was like a little bit of a love letter to Los mm -hmm. Angeles too. And the the protagonist worked in film, which I was going to film school for a little bit there so I, I enjoyed all of that and then to have a really cute romance on top of it was was really exciting so the next one i was going to mention was one that i did read really early this year the ocean at the end of the lane oh um, the neil gaiman book yeah um i read that last year I think. yeah it was it was just way more personal than his usual stuff his stuff is usually pretty fantastical and uh, this, I found, was personal to him from what I heard, and it was just more of a personal story. Uh, the next book, this book's also about World War II. <laughs> uh, and fine. it's um, The Nightingale by Kristen Hanna. Oh, I have it here, actually. The book is about two sisters in Nazi-occupied France. Mm -hmm. And the older sister is, like, just kind of trying to protect her daughter while her husband is out fighting war. Her younger sister is young, and she's trying to find a way to join the resistance. And they're kind of very different people and it's about their journey through Nazi occupied friends. The last one I threw on here is one that I've had for a little while but only read recently. The Writer's Journey. Okay. It's a book about writing. Mm. Have you read that one? I no. don't think you've read that one. It's a, it's a non-fiction book about writing and it's sort of an adaptation of Joseph Campbell's Hero with a Thousand Faces which is like the origin of the hero's journey as like a philosophy, like as a concept. It was obviously, it's been a concept for thousands of years, but a name and with all of the elements spelled out, have read Hero with a Thousand Faces. Writer's Journey takes the concepts that Joseph Campbell worked on and sort of says like, this is how I write screenplays or, or books with these concepts and he sort of modernizes it. Something you can relate to, like mentioning book, mentioning like movies you've seen instead of mentioning like Oedipus or something, you know, it's it's a different take on it and I think it's really worthwhile and I don't even really recommend reading Hero's Journey first because I find Joseph Campbell to be like more than a little sexist. Mm. He's got really good concepts but he will say shit like a hero's journey is about a man and like women are, the are they're, they're like they're elements of the hero's journey. Okay. They're there's something that happens to the hero, it's not about them. Of course, yeah. Um, we, we happen to men. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's their story, we're just here to help them along. Make a sandwich. Hey, <laughs> go, honey. We man a pixie dream girl then oh, into finding yeah. their true selves. Oh, that's my calling yeah. in life. Yeah. 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 Whereas Writer's Journey, it's a little more open, it uses some examples that do have female leads. One thing I kept noticing in his writing, is this is written by a man, a lot of people when they're writing and they're talking about like the main character of your story, they default to he. Uh, this author, he defaulted to she a nice. lot. And I was just like, oh, this guy's like talking to me. <laughs> <laughs> Feeling you. I was like, um, this is cool. If you're a writer, give Hero's Journey a chance is what I'm saying. Read it, take what you want and throw away what you don't want because ultimately I think it has made my writing more informed. The next one I want to talk about is Buffering, which is Hannah Hart's book, which obviously she's a gigantic YouTube star. I honestly like don't remember why I picked this up initially. I think I was just on like an impulsive book buying mm -hmm. binge, like more impulsive than I yeah. am now. I really wasn't watching Hannah Hart's videos very much at the time. I still only occasionally watch yeah. Hannah Hart's videos. Not that I dislike her, I just am not actively not up to date. Up to date and yeah. following her. Yeah and whatnot so I was like I didn't know much about it I just knew that she was funny yeah. <laughs> and, and the book looked neato so I picked it up and it's just it's very dark because of her life yeah and a, a lot of people who come from comedy do have yeah. pretty dark lives yeah and it was it was just so well written and so well done and very I don't know. It was just a, a really good read and I was very surprised by it. Do you have any more? No, that's all for me. My favorites were a little disappointing and mm. w not that they were bad, but you know. Yeah. I, I feel like yeah. I could read something better and okay. uh, so I'm kind of taking that and being like I want I want to like immerse myself in reading and and really uh, jump in. That was our that was the best. That's as good as it got for us. Let us know what your favorite books were. What were your favorites? Yeah.
It was, it was a good year. Somebody's got to have some better books than mine. Mm -hmm. Until next time. But my cup's empty. It's okay. I'll just drink for you. <laughs>